So my name's Henry Sheehan. I manage Wilton Park, which is part of the Fig Trees Organic Farms set of properties down here at Grafton. I've been managing here full time for the last three years. Uh, transferred here from Inverell, where I first came across organics for the first time when I started working with Glen. So Wilton Park being 390 hectares, we're subdivided into approximately 90 paddocks. Um, we have a few bigger areas that have, we've put away for wetland areas, sort of restoration and regeneration areas. So on average, most of the grazing paddocks are around three hectares in size. Uh, I run it in with two mobs of cattle. So I have sort of 160 cows and calves in each mob. Depending on how you want to rate your DSC, it's close to sort of 3,000 DSC. So if I put a mob of cows and calves into a paddock, my stocking rate is 1,000 DSC per hectare. Uh, it's high, but you can create such positive change with such intensity and such density in paddocks. Basically, uh, in the coastal environment where we get terrific growth in our pastures, I'm looking to take, probably put, hopefully put cattle into a paddock when my grass is 25 to 30 centimetres high and would then graze that back to a position of maybe 10 centimetres high is, like, is when I'm looking to come out. With my large animals, I have terrific distribution of dung and urine across the whole paddock rather than in certain areas, which you know, spreads the fertiliser further for me. Uh, what the cattle aren't eating, they have impacted either by sitting on it or with their feet, so they're incorporating organic matter down onto the soil surface to continue to build our humus levels. This process, over time, will continue to improve. So, it's, you know, we're not just uh, keeping our, our asset, which is our soil base, our, our, our mineral bases, at a, at a level we believe we are improving them all the time. So we are forever sustainable. In a, in a, in a 40 day period, I have a fair idea of where I'm hoping the cattle will be at any given time. Due to a rain event of some sort or extremely hot weather or whatever, those decisions will change along the way. Uh, and therefore, where I thought cattle might have been on a, on a certain date may change. And that's decisions that are getting made on a daily basis due to what you see on the ground, uh, due to what the predictions might be for the future, due to what's happened in the past. Uh, but the cattle are moved with my trusty little red steed here. And the cattle, 99% of the time, actually follow me from paddock A to paddock B, regardless of how far it is away from paddock A. Uh, the cattle know through the planned grazing system that we have, the, the cattle know that they're going to a better place. They're going to a paddock that's been rested, been recovered. The feed's going to be 10 times better there than it is the way they're coming out of. So they're more than willing to get to the next, next paddock. One of the most enjoyable parts of this job is actually moving the livestock. It is just because the, there's absolutely no stress in it. And it's, you, we can just sort of see all the, all the behavioural instincts come out in the animals. They get up near the bike, but they're no longer allowed to go past because they're not sure where they're going. You get them into a fresh paddock, and they all start kicking their heels up and running around. Uh, I love that sort of interaction with the animals. Yeah. Animal welfare is, is a huge issue. Uh, probably one of the challenges that people find when they subdivide their paddocks up is you start to take out areas of shade that were originally part of a paddock Y uh, and, and watering points. So we've put a lot of emphasis, emphasis into planting trees over the last 14 years. We've been planting trees sort of in, in, in rows of three just to try and get as much coverage as we can. I'd, I'd like to think in, in the future, as we were satisfied with a bit more shade, we'd plant more trees in, in groves, sort of a, a bundle of trees, sort of 10 by 10 rows of trees or something like that. They get terrific, much better biodiversity in amongst the tree runs like that. And uh, they can then create their own sort of little microclimate as well because they have a bit more protection from the wind. As far as, you know, shade and shelter, for, obviously, for the livestock, but we've also got lots of kangaroos that come in from the residences that we want to give them protection. We plant understory type trees, so we have homes for little birds and ground dwelling animals and everything as well. So the diversification in our species is getting better all the time. As our soil fertility improves, as our uh, pasture base and our protection we have for, for new softer style plants to, to uh, establish themselves is improving all the time. For example, up on the, on the, on the hill country, you know, six or seven years ago, you would never see a clover plant. Where now, with aid of the Soteria, I believe, and big mobs of cattle, Soteria being such a, uh, grows su such amazing amount of growth of, of herbage mass that we can lay terrific amounts of organic matter on the ground. 
which then has now created a climate where clover is happy to germinate up on these hills. And every year through, through winter time you can just be an absolute whiteout with white clover. And that's a transition that's taken place in, in five years of, of careful management. All, you know, and I think in also there are, you have powerful decisions in bringing goodness from the flats up to the hills. You know, if you can make conscious decisions about animals bringing up grass seeds or animals bringing up some fertility from the, from the flats up onto the hills, and that is in your power to control where that gets deposited as well. The most important basic part of that soil health is, is keeping it covered. So make sure you don't have any bare ground. Uh, if you can then keep it moist, which also aids in your covering. So if you've left a good herbage mass, residual amount of pasture on top of your soils, it creates an environment for it to be active and the, with, with the microbes and, and, and all the living organisms and things that are in the soil. Through the planned grazing that's, that's happened here at Wilton Park for the last 12 years is when the process began. It's all about building up the resilience in your soils. Uh, the more healthy your soils are, the more organic matter, the more humus you have, the bigger buffer you give yourself in periods of extreme wet and in periods of extreme dry. Uh, the grazing management and, and the residuals, the, the pasture heights and things that you leave behind, if you can control the soil temperature by up to five or six degrees, it just gives you growth periods so much longer, coming into winter and, 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 and out the other side. So the whole thing, the, the looking after the soils and the microbes and, and the, the microclimates involved there has given us now resilience where through a very dry time, we still have pasture growing. I still have 50 or 60 days full with feed in front of me for 300 cows with, uh, with very little rainfall. So uh, it's a decision making process that is in my mind that where am I going to be in 30 days time if I don't have any rain? But I'm not at yet nervous about it. I'm not going to run out of feed in the next 60 days regardless of a rainfall event or not. And I believe we can take the pastures down below what we would consider optimum for a short period of time if necessary, if it continues to stay dry, because we have been able to build up some resilience in the soil over the past 12 years of management. The cattle are my tool to, to what I'm doing as in what we're trying to do to the environment and what we're trying to do to the landscape that's under our, under our control. So, you know, it put it a simpler way, possibly the, the beef that we sell is, is possibly a byproduct of what actually what we're managing. We're trying to manage the soil, we're trying to manage the pastures, and lo and behold, we're doing it with animals, and that is our saleable product out the other end. But my decision making isn't how many kilos a day can I put on an animal. My decision making process is what am I, what process do I need to go through to make sure my pastures re remain sustainable for the next time I come round, be it in 40 days or be it in 60 days, in 10 years time, where's it going to be? So that's that's the thought process that, that's coming into into the management of Wilton Park.